Hey gang, what's good? Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. We're here in the Wild Mare on the top floor, getting ready to speak to Annalise, or whoever, who I think, I guess, this is the perfect time to do so, because seen before, uh, at least with Robbie Yuna, we couldn't talk to her when she was out front, uh, doing a little dance here on the pedestal. Also, right as I was about to begin and get, like, reacquainted with this, yeah, of course we have to, uh, we've got Khan, who was downstairs, asked us to find Oswald, an old elf who owes her 5,000 coppers, all that good stuff, right? Well, look at this! Recommend a companion, and it has a little image of Jody. Are there any others that have that? Yeah, of course. Oh, that's really good. That way you don't, because always in these, in a lot of games, you'll be like, oh, if I'm doing a quest related to a companion, I definitely want to have the appropriate companion with me. That way I get the extra dialogue, the extra input, all that good stuff, right? And this, holy shit, excellent. We need to make sure, especially when we're doing like bigger ones, maybe not so much uh, quests is, is it so important, but certainly we should be mindful to check this frequently to make sure that we do have the recommended companion with us, right? All right. Let us head on inside here. Sure. Speak to Annalise. Let's see, what's up? A young woman reclines on the cushions, a hookah hose held delicately in one hand. Eyes closed, she sings to herself. Her voice is soft and inviting. She doesn't move when she hears you approach, but slowly opens her eyes with a lazy smile. Come, lay your head on my breast. I will read you the work of my favorite poet, Skilba. Wow, okay, so this is just like polar opposite of the other room, right? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is your heaven and your hell, your, uh, your angel and your devil shit. Okay, uh, Khan's looking for someone named Oswald. Sound familiar? What's your problem with Khan? How much for your time? Tell me about yourself. Uh, never mind. Let's, let's first learn about this person, because it may be useful as we investigate Oswald, right? Uh, tell me more about yourself. It's futile to attempt to summarize the whole of a person in simple words. How to capture their dreams, the desires of another, their feel and taste. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's got good mouthfeel, right? But I appreciate your curiosity nonetheless. I am an actor. <laughs> Trained from childhood. Difficult for you to believe, I'm sure. I don't know. We've met a lot of folks in here who have pretty interesting pasts, right? A teasing smile pulls at the corner of her lips. Her voice is wistful, almost melancholic. My troop were my family, and we traveled the whole of the Adir Empire, performing the classic literatures to cheering audiences. It sounds a pleasant life. Too bad you didn't do something more productive with your time. Wow, what a fucking thing to say. Say nothing. Um, uh, no, it sounds a pleasant life. The work was good when the crowds were grateful, and their pockets swelled with coin. She gives you a pained smile and looks away. Hands on hip on his hips, Seraphin grins, and Jody as well. Okay, cool. Continue. I found a more dependable application of my talents here. To touch the hearts of others with my voice... I could not give that up. Have you come to hear some verse? Hmm. Uh, hang on. What's, uh... Khan's looking for someone named Oswald. Sound familiar? I'm sure I don't know who you're talking Ooh. about. Now please leave. Oh, gosh. She gestures toward her door and makes a shooing motion. Oh, we could have diplomacy, or insight, or streetwise here and lie. Oswald's run up a debt with the wrong folks. I can help him, but I need to know where he's gone. Or we can bribe her. Maybe 250 coppers will jog your memory. It'll be our secret. No one has to know you talk to me. Or farewell. Well, obviously we gotta use a streetwise check, huh? Alright, let's fucking go for it. Oswald's run up a debt with the wrong folks. I can help him, but I need to know where he's gone. That... That explains quite a lot. <laughs> Jesus Christ, come on. <laughs> Our entire party just gives away the bluff. <laughs> just by, like, they have the worst tells ever. <laughs> uh, she chews on a knuckle, brow furrowed, deciding whether she should trust you. Then she sighs heavily and gives you a sheepish smile. Oswald has visited oft of late. He's a sentimental old man, and he longs for the words of our homeland, Adir. I would often read the old epics to him in their original El Dadiran. Her eyes gain a distant, unfocused look, and a wistful smile spreads across her face. Huh. 
Okay, continue. He's grown paranoid recently, however. Always muttering about the shadows following him and other such nonsense. It was quite unnerving, frankly. <laughs> he came to me in a panic a few days ago and shoved his journal into my hands. He told me he'd be back for it, but I've not seen hide nor hair of him since. Oh, there could be clues in that journal. I wonder. Perhaps his journal would help you find him. Mm, perhaps. Here, take this key. You'll find the journal in my armoire. Oh, shit. So we could have just completely skipped her and just dug right into the armoire. All right, we got uh, her key here. Let's see. This slim little key opens Annali uh, Annalise's wardrobe on the top floor of the Wild Mare in Queen's Berth. Berth. It smells faintly of neroli perfume and white leaf smoke. Just a little bit of extra detail there, huh? I like it. Okay, cool. What's Ahoy, up in... Captain, oh, Captain. Uh, if I could bend your ear a moment, uh, I'll be aiming to thank you for bringing me aboard. Oh, we must have crossed a positive threshold with Seraphim. Okay. A furred hand at his belly and one heel out, he bows deeply, drooping ear almost touching the ground. You run a tight shop, and you ain't no terrible person, neither. It'd be a welcome change from the gentleman of leisure. Tell me about the gentleman of leisure. You're welcome. I'm glad you're with me. I don't have time for this. Huh. Can we... If we say I'm glad he's with me, does that progress us past being able to learn more about this? Because I always want to learn, right? I always want to learn more about shit. Let's just, let's play it safe. Let's go with the top one first. Tell me about the Gentleman of Leisure. The Gentleman is only the finest ship among the Principi, and Captain Ferrante, our most respected shipmaster. It were two honors and an half to be chosen to join his crew. I detect a butt in there. Why were you willing to leave that crew to join mine? Good to know. Yeah, why were you learn willing to leave that crew to join mine? I don't sell yourself a Suole short cap, nor me neither. I know an opportunity when I board it. He chuckles. Suole. Oh my god, that's how you pronounce that? Holy shit, honestly, the voice acting in Pillars 2 is leading to a lot of pronunciation revelations. Alright, continue. Now I'd seen what there were to be seen upon the gentleman. Learn what ropes were to be learned. Methinks a watcher after a dead god will uh, thrust me into an old new set of eye openings. Hmm. Jody's eyes gleam with dark amusement. Okay. And believe you me, I do appreciate myself a good thrust. <laughs> Jesus, well, we're in the right place, friend. He grins. Adair enjoys that, Jody likes it, and Aloth, mm, not so much. All right. Hey, I'm glad you're with me. I have a gift for you. This trinket be from one of the first ships I hunted. Oh. Malnaj would have snatched it had I not found a perfect hiding spot. Oh my god, he had it hid it in his anus. So where did you hide it? Thank you for the gift, Seraphin. I'll pass on the gift. You keep it. So where did you hide it? Oh no, were I to tell you that, you mightn't want it no more. <laughs> Seraphin gives an innocent whistle while scratching his ass as subtly as one could scratch it. God. <laughs> Alright, this... This guy, he's just the character that I always play in games, isn't he? He's just hes just my go-to character. <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> just a jest, Cap. Nay, I tucked it away in my beard. Didn't wear braids <laughs> back then, so my hair caught about everything from feathers to fish bones. Yeah, jeez. Malnar shook me down for plunder after each raid, and I figured out she wouldn't go nowhere near my beard. Said my face were like a saw rip fetish. Ugh. Why did Malnaj treat you so badly? Thank you for the gift, Seraphim. No, why Why did Malnaj treat you so bad? Don't really know for sure, Cap. Thought at first she wanted me. Lasses be that way sometimes, treating you worse the more they fancy you. Hmm. Given she tried to get me killed twice within our first fortnight together, I thought mayhap she were in deepest love. <laughs> he chuckles quietly. The faint... Yep, yeah, Adair and Jody, they both like that. Okay. Were you attracted to Malnaj? Love makes people do crazy things. So what was the issue? On second thought, I don't want to hear about this. Uh, were you attracted to Malnaj? Didn't fancy her in the least. But a man has needs. And I figured at the time that she were as wet as any other lass. Jeez. Figured I'd give her a whisper about what we might get down to in the old. Her answer were an unequivocal no made with a uh, sharpness. Might have been the closest I've ever been to death. He winces and rubs his throat. Uh, well, thank you for the gift, Seraphim. You be entirely welcome. 
Now, if you'll pardon me, I've round about reached my limit for sentiment. Seraphin salutes, grinning broadly, and turns away. And we got Cypher's Shackle. Huh. Gives plus one constitution and resistance to dex afflictions. Huh. What is this? Any, like a accessory slot? Like ring or earring? I forgot, were there two different things for that? Eh. I'm not sure who would want this, I guess. Maybe a dare for the constitution, which is pretty nice, I suppose. Oh yeah, well, let's read this. The woman who recently wore this shackle came from an enigmatic tribe of pale elves. Little is known about her people, save that at some point her village was sacked by roving slavers, and she was taken to the dead fire. Aboard the slave ship, she was compliant but silent. Her captors were horrified to discover the woman's mouth had been wired shut, presumably as a child. Oh my god. And then she went out to save all the Madokans. Then she touched their minds. He travels, he travels southward. Watch the sky. Uneased, the slavers fettered the woman's neck with an iron Audra shackle they reserved for captured ciphers and did their best to ignore her. When the ship arrived in the Deadfire, the slavers dropped anchor with several illicit merchant vessels to offload their kith cargo. When the woman was called to the auction block, she spoke to her imprisoner's minds, and uh, despite the binding collar, Aethys nears, he will end it. Then she vanished. All that remained were the shackle. Huh. Did she know? When did this happen? How recent was this? Huh. Okay. That's a little suspect. Alright, continue. Or end dialogue. Let's see here. What does Adair have equipped at the moment? Let's see. Yeah, it might be a necklace slot? I'm not sure. Let's take a peek here. Yeah, neck. Okay. Huh. I think, um... Does, is this going to give him ultimately more health than one... Is one con How much is one constitution worth as far as health is concerned? Let's see. Take a peek at this. Oh, uh, so he does lose a fair bit of health. Man, how much health is one constitution worth? Just four. Jeez. Okay, so you're really... What you really want is this. The dex afflictions. Or like a skill check, right? If you want a constitution skill check. Quick, nimble, or swift... Huh. Okay. It gets rid of hobbled, immobilized, and paralyzed. Maybe I want this. Maybe I would rather have this on. No, because look, I get perception. Huh. Who would we want? Who's our lowest health person besides myself? Oh shit, Aloth is actually lower than even I am. Alright, maybe we'll give it to Aloth. Alright, we'll have Adair keep using the higher... Ability, to, who's a what's it there? Plus one bluff. Alright, and then we'll give this to... Yeah, I guess Seraphin, right? Okay, cool. Not a bad bit of tackle, Captain. Hmm? Man, I love that Still they have those little quips whenever you give them stuff. Just the more extra dialogue from party members is excellent. Right? Especially because the party members, I thought, in Pillars 1 were so good. And honestly, a little underutilized. I would have loved to have seen more of that. And now... Yo, we're totally seeing more of it, and I fucking love it! Alright, open up this shit. What do you got? Oh, is she gonna mind if I take these clothes? Okay, I'm just taking it. Let's see, let's read this journal here. Give Oswald's journal to Khan. Let's first see what's up with this. Oh shit, where'd I even put it? Oh god, I thought I gave it to myself, but... Oh, it's, it's a quest item, huh? Yeah, there it is. Let's make sure. Yeah, okay. Good to know. Okay. Oswald's journal. Golden Dog. Is that supposed to be like Gutentag or something? <laughs> this afternoon, I walked the streets of Nakataka and felt an unusual spring in my step. I cannot be sure if it is the fine weather of the archipelago or my great distance from the Deerwood and the blasted Goose and Fox Inn that has gifted me this buoyancy of spirit, but I am grateful nonetheless. I've seen no sign of the girl, Helia be praised, God's willing, I have slipped her net at last. Oh. Oh, these must be something else. Me... Pfft, dog. 
The shadows are strange here, seeming to move of their own accord. As I passed from Queen's Berth to Periki's Overlook this morning, I could have sworn I saw one turn to face me, then another. I fled the area as quickly as I could, and as far as I can tell, I was not followed. I have many enemies, as any man of roguish adventurous main should, should, though none have cause to search for me here. I know these shadows must be a trick of the mind, but still I am uneasy. The next entry is written in a shaky, wild hand, clearly penned in great haste. Ritlin's Dog As I put me down to bed this morning, I heard a faint whispering beneath my window. I always leave it open to better catch the breeze, and thanks be to Hilia for it, or I might have been none the wiser. However, when I went to investigate, no one was there, and yet I know. I know I heard voices. I may be old, perhaps even paranoid, but I am not crazy. I must leave this place with all haste. Gods, protect me in my flight. On the next and final page of the journal is the symbol of Woodica, a broken crown scrawled in a deep red ink. Jeez! Okay. Huh. Can we talk Have to her about to this? Hear some verse? Hey, what's your problem with Khan? Oh, her. Yes, she is persistent, isn't she? She barged in and began asking me all sorts of inappropriate questions about my customers. Oh my. She grew incensed when I asked oh. her to leave. She's no longer welcome in my room. Anelis wrings her hands and looks away. Her gaze settles on her armoire in the corner. I do hope she's not a friend of yours. Her manners are atrocious. Oh, did you see that? The little hint? If perhaps we couldn't have streetwise checked that? Oh, it gave us a little tip there that there is in fact something valuable inside uh, the armoire relative, uh, that is relevant to this quest and not just random loot. All right. Uh, never mind. Farewell. See ya. All right. Let's see. What was that quest update that we just got? Is that the one that we're on? Yeah. Huh. I found Oswald's journal and Elise's armoire. Khan will want to read it. I can find her on the ground floor of the Wild Mare. From what I read in Oswald's journal, it appears someone's been following him for some time. Strangely, the final entry in the journal is just a drawing Woodica's broken crown symbol. Khan might know more. All right. Eh? Huh. Got and somehow this ties into Jody? What the fuck? Should we check out here? What is this? You know what? Be yeah, before we go down, let's investigate these other rooms. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Anything up in here? Oh, Constantine. Why not? Oh, look, you have a little crate here I can just freely take. And I will. All right. Are you also just another person who I can hire? A, bor a burly dwarven man hums a jaunty tune to himself as he fastidiously organizes his collection of scented oils. When he hears you enter the room, he greets you with a smile and a humongous outstretched hand. His grip is strong and sure. Come to seek ablutions for your sins? <laughs> Oh no, is that what this guy's doing? He slaps his knee with a bark of laughter. Get it? Ablutions? Absolution? Ha! I crack myself up. Gets me every time. <laughs> he wipes a tear from his eyes, still chuckling. Massage? Bath? Whatever you need. Just ask. How'd you end up here? Oh, you don't want to hear about that. I lived a boring life, so there wouldn't be much to the telling. He crosses his thick arms over his chest. A slight blush spreads across his cheeks. Indulge me. Uh, truth be told, my real passion is pottery. <laughs> Trouble is, I got these big hands. <laughs> Not meant for delicate work. <laughs> he turns his hands palm up for you to inspect. Just one is easily large enough to cover your entire face. Worked out in the end, of course. Now I specialize in relieving tension in a mower and death godlike. He nods to himself. No way, can I, like, recruit this guy onto my ship? Perception. You seem bored here. <sighs> I guess I can't hide my feelings as well as I thought I could. <laughs> he gives you a nervous chuckle and scratches his beard. The stability's good and all, but uh, I haven't seen anything that gets my blood pumping in ages. You know what I mean? Stability sounds pretty good right about now. What's life without a little excitement? You don't know how good you have it. Sure, let's let's um 
Let's encourage this line of thinking here. What's life without a little excitement? Doing the same old thing day in, day out. It's enough to make a man leap from the nearest window. He nods vigorously. You could come with me. Where to? He raises an inquisitive brow, his large hands previously dancing with restless energy, still. You know that 700-foot-tall statue made of Audra? I'm going after it. No kidding. He nearly drops a bottle of massage oil in his excitement. <sighs> I like to see something like that for myself. <sighs> he sighs. Man, I feel like I've heard his voice before. I feel like I've heard this, whoever the voice actor is here, but somewhere else. He sighs, a wistful edge in his voice. Do you think I could come with you? Just for a bit. Recruit Constantine. Grab your things then, let's go. Hell, you don't have to tell me twice. Oh, is this guy one of the sidekick people, or is he actually... He might actually be a sidekick companion. I guess we're about to fucking find out, huh? I mean, I do want to use the... Oh, shit, yeah. That is wild. Okay. He can be a howler. <laughs> All right, view. Details on sidekicks. Yeah. Sidekicks start out as unique NPCs, integral to specific quests, complete with their own personalities and looks, and they may offer to join your party as a reward for completing their quest. Just like companions, these new characters have a custom portrait and voice sound set. However, unlike companions, they do not have their own vision quest and will not participate in the companion relationship system. Right. Which, it's so cool that this is even an option, but... I mean, fuck, I want to go all in, right? I want all the, com all the like, hardline companions, you know? But it's interesting that this says he'll have a quest associated with him, huh? Huh. Alright, continue. Let's see. A chanter or a howler? We definitely want... Someone who can chant, right? If we need him. Hmm. Barbarian, I feel like hard pass. Let's see here. Take a preview. He does still get the Scald subclass, right? Yeah, okay. And what is this? Huh, while many chanters prefer to work their magic from the safety of the backline, Scalds depend on toe-to-toe -to -toe combat to power their invocation. Scalds are found in many cultures with a proud martial tradition, celebrating the deeds of their neighbors, kin, and ancestors. Offensive invocations cost one less phrase. Melee weapon crits have a 50% chance to grant a phrase. Wow! Jeez, that seems really good! Non-offensive invocations cost plus one phrase to cast. Oh my god! Holy shit! Combined with being a barbarian, where you get the AoE carnage? Right? Does this... Can this also proc off of carnage hits? Is Scald a unique thing to him? Or is that um, because he's a sidekick character? Does that mean that his he's sourcing his subclass from all of them? Because holy shit, what a fucking combo, right? Scald subclass of Chanter combined with barbarian? That's ridiculous, right? Jeez! Alright, well I feel like we this is the greatest pick. I mean, even if we're not going to use him, and uh, except for during his like super quest or whatever, then we may need to use him at some point. We'll see, if we need like a chanter. Alright. <laughs> Sorry, I promised you <laughs> that we'd see the world, but uh, uh, hopefully you don't mind working on ship a bit. Alright. Hmm, sure. There we go. And let's look around here. Let's have everybody collected, and let's head out here and see what we got out this way. This should be like the balcony thing, right? We saw this earlier. We'll just have a quick peek out here before we head on inside, right? That makes sense to me. Oh, by the way, I'm using the... I'm doing, um, I'm trying out the other recording software. I'm trying out Shadowplay with this. Should maybe make things less hitchy? As you can see, the loading screens, they sure as shit ain't affected. But, um, we'll see. Like, especially when weather kicks in, in the city. We'll see if it uh, has any impact there. But otherwise, should should be uh, an improvement all around. Should just be an improvement. The only downside is, like I said, takes longer to get videos popped out. Good lord, this load screen... Taken for fucking ever. Oh my gosh, it's really gonna suck when we have to go back inside and see this again. Jeez, may just have to do a cut. Honestly, for future ones, 
Ain't got anything else to really say during load screen. What the fuck? Oh, look, there we go. Here's our super magical hand. Oh my gosh. And they're porting pillars to console, huh? Jeez. Do you think they'll be as longer on console, too? Because that's usually the ex expectation, right? Takes a little bit longer to load? Well, I, I suppose it depends on what. Are there any consoles right now that use SSDs? Oh my gosh, everyone is talking. Valiant bartenders, don't water down the booze. Oh. Well, you've got you've got to have principles. Okay, what are you talking about here, friend? Exactly! We're no better than the fish-eyed bastards skulking around here. I'm sorry? Let's see. Which is more than I can say for Rawatayans. Okay, and this person... How does that song go? Kure's Amora. Let's see. Beloved. And Kure's Avalian Farewell. Literally a contraction of Go with the gods. Okay, we've heard of all that. Anyone out here worth talking to? Can we talk to these sailors? No. If you're selling these waters, you'll want to want to see Sansa about a map. Sure. Okay, and this just loops down and around. Can I? Can I just you rob these people? See and not be seen. Can I rob one of these folks? I wouldn't mind doing that. Alright. Let's do a quick save here. And... Oink. Oh, shit. Okay, there's just too many of them. Hey. Alright. Let's gather our party and head back inside. There's well, you know what? Do. Let's head on in from down here. Look, that's smart. We'll skip out on an extra load screen. And look at all this loot. And of course there were those kids down there, right? The skies shout in full voice, I say. Oh, calling the weather, huh? Alright. Come down here, speak to Khan. All that good shit. Yeah, for now, we'll see about skipping load screens. I'll see if I, about cutting them, if they turn out to be really long like that last one. This one was pretty short, right? I guess because we're just loading the interior. Alright. So far, that's pretty much my, my only... The only thing I don't like about the game at the moment is the fucking wild-ass long load screen, so... Okay. Let's see. There she is. Speed on up over here. Have you got any leads on that mad old goat yet? I thought we already asked her who she was. Who are you? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. Yeah, I'm we one have. Of the countless minor nobles that litter the Deerwooden countryside. When people find out they okay, start yeah, doing we did. weird Here's shit. a journal. Khan flips through Oswald's journal, then stops and looks up at you, eyes wide. Someone has hastily scrawled the broken crown symbol of Wodica across the last page. Khan mutters to herself. She traces the symbol with her fingers and frowns. Oh, Oswald, you've really stepped in it now, haven't you? Getting mixed up with Wodikins? You damned old fool. She shakes her head sadly and closes the journal with a snap. Where could they have taken him? She chews on her lower lip with uneven teeth and mutters to herself. Yeah, look at that. It's still hitching a bit. What, I wonder what the cause of that could be. All right. Let's see. Survival. You must have sailed through half of the dead fire to get to Nakataka. Anything catch your eye? There are countless little bolt holes scattered through the islands. Can you narrow it down? Huh. Let's see. You're asking the wrong guy. I'm new here. Shrug. Hell if I know. Say nothing. Hmm. Let's go with the the origin check, right? Let's do that. There are countless little bolt holes scattered throughout the islands. Can you narrow it down? Not really. To be honest, I spent most of the trip out from Defiance Bay bent over the bulwark giving Andra a taste of my innards. I hate boats. Say nothing? Because <laughs> I don't... My character would not say that. Would definitely not hate boats. Damn. If only I could find that captain who gave us passage to the dead fire. Bet he'd know. Wait a tick. She blinks, remembering. When our ship neared Nekataka, the bosun told me about a weird temple on an island in the Karatapu Channel, southwest of the city. She wouldn't huh. tell me what it was for, though. I got real spooked when I asked. Weird temple? Sign me up. Shrug. Seems like a good place to start as any. Say nothing. Yeah, hell yeah, let's hit up a weird temple. Go take a look, then, and let me know what you find. She marks a location on your map with a flourish. With any luck, you'll catch the old goat there in one piece, and we'll both leave here with some weight in our purse. Cool. All right. Now, as nice as it would be to go yeah, and do that, we sure as shit ain't leaving Nekataka without Palagina, right? Head on out. All right. 
Let's see, where else do we have to go? We still need to check this little road along here, right? We have Road South, Peddler's Canal, this entry point. Have we checked the Cobbler? I'm not sure. Let's see, back alley. We haven't- have we been to Bardado Estate? Yeah, we have, haven't we? Or was it Valera Estate? We definitely need to check out the Luminous Audra Mill. Okay. Yeah, so it's mostly, uh, buildings here on this main street. Oh, we also haven't checked out the headquarters, which might be exactly hey, where Palagina is, right? Or exactly where she would never be. <laughs> okay. Let's check this out. Some Daibo Oosa. What have we got in here? Salt. Clothes. Sure. Let's talk to these kids down here. Maybe they have some sort of street urchin insight. Oh, look. We can totally talk to them. Let's do a quick save here. You want something? Got any food? Spare coin? Too bad we can't. Huh. Alright. Fine, fine. Nekataka Guard? Feels as if there are more foreigners than Juana in the harbor these days. What's in here? Orland's Cradle. Named by raided Saren settlers who came upon the mushrooms in the forest, this thick, flat fungus grows along the base of large trees. Okay. Uh, oops. Took some sort of drug. <laughs> All right. The queen is holding court oh. today with the Valians and Rawatians. How long before they're killing each other? Wager on it. Hmm. Okay. Let us head on down to the headquarters, right? I definitely want to check this out. Oh, look, there's a little secret thing up here that we can loot. Definitely seems worthwhile. Oh, word has it the Bardados are sharpening their daggers. And I suppose Laro and his miscreants are at the heart of it. You suppose right. No good can come of it. Aren't we looking for Laro? Hold up. Who are we looking for? Yeah, we totally are looking for Laro. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Let's head on out up here. This is a nice big fancy building, huh? We can huh? summon the guards if you want to be difficult, Aimiko. Kindly leave. If Luca doesn't see reason, the Duape will lose their lands. For their sake, I must... That's enough out of you. Good day. Huh. Is Taweno the other companion? They definitely begin with a T. Oh, that's definitely not his image. All right. The young Hawana wears a disconcerted frown. He meets your approach with the flicker of a welcoming smile, but it dies down quickly. Please... I must ask a favor. He shies back from making eye contact, keeping his head lowered. What say? Do you have business with the Valian Trading Company? Not yet, at least. Can't help you, friend. Sorry. What seems to be the problem? My people of the Duape. We signed a contract with the company. Tawainu looks toward the headquarters with a despondent frown. We were not understanding the terms at the time. I wish to... What say? Renegotiate. But the clerks turned me away. Tell me more about the contract. If you were kicked out, I'd wager it was for a good reason. Uh, tell me more about this contract. My father, the Ranga, took payment from the company. In exchange, they dig for Audra. Hmm. Alright, Ranga. The title of a uh, Huana tribal chieftain. Not to be confused with Ranga Nui, the Rawatayan title for the Emperor. Ah, uh, okay. Huh. There must be some sort of lineage there, right? Interesting. Like, Nui maybe means new, like the new Ranga? Okay. He speaks with more confidence, as if these words were rehearsed several times over. He did not understand the Valian way. When he dies, the Outlanders will claim our island for themselves. Father has fallen ill, and the clerk, Luca, stands by the agreement as surely as if it was stamped in his skin. So, what's your plan? Insight check. I'm guessing the company didn't like someone challenging the their unfair deal. That's a bold proposal, if I ever heard one. Your father's a poor neg negotiator. Not my problem. Let's see. Let's do the insight check. I'm guessing the company didn't like someone challenging their unfair deal. Akira. When the Valian clerk learned I was from the Duape, he became very anxious. Hmm. I made my appeals to Luca. But my words were as stones dropped down the deepest well. While I am barred from the company office, I can do nothing for my people. 
Chawenu worries one of the many tassels adorning his garb. I'll meet with Luca. Maybe we can arrive to more agreeable terms. We can bluff? I'm a legal clerk myself. If I'm going to represent you, I'll need payment up front. <laughs> Why did they kick you out of their office? I'll look into it, but I make no promises. Good luck with that. I, it's got nothing to do with me. Huh. I mean, yeah, let's agree to help, but also let's get a little extra money. Me? I'm a legal clerk myself. If I'm going to represent you, I'll need payment up front. I specialize in bird law. There's a lot on the, in the dead fire. Akira, the gods have steered us together, friend. Take all that you need to get started. He dumps two palmfuls of coppers into your hands. Wow. All right. Easy money. All right. Seraphin's eyes close as he nods along. And Jody, of course, does not. Her eyes narrow, dark lashes fusing. Akira, my thanks. I will remain here by day until justice is done. The worst of his concerns are quickly overshadowed by a broad smile. Okay. Hey. Before we go in, though, let's check up that. here with this cobbler. I don't think I remember talking to him. A giant? One of the Rathun? No, much bigger. Such is the rumor. Sounds like sailor tales to me. Huh. Look, we can actually go up on this little thing here. There's some woot loot up here? No. All right. This is a nice view of uh, the ship. Okay, cool. How much money do we have right now? 8.5k. I don't think that's enough for an upgrade. All right, cobbler. In the market for decent footwear? You won't find any cat leather around in my shop. Some of us hold ourselves to a higher standard. Cat leather? Oh my god. Hey, don't say that near my cat right there. Jesus. The merchant gestures for you to speak freely. Let me see what you have. Of course. Come take a look. All right. Shore Walker sandals. Plus 10% uh, stride, one extra resolve. Ooh, too stealth. Mmm, I'm tempted by that. Boots of stealth. Hmm. Ooh, should I? Do I dare? Shore Walker sandals as well. Both of these aren't half bad. Hang on. Let's take a look at our stash. Did we pick up any extra weapons and stuff? Yeah, we did. Let's get rid of some of this. Armor. There we go. Get rid of some of the duplicates. How about this? Hats. Yep, that can go. Consumables. Eh, we should probably keep. Food and all that we should keep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Do I want to take the boots of stealth? Do you think we'll find more of them? Oh, I'm not sure. Fuck it. Let's do it. Right? There we go. We're even less close to an upgrade at this point. Fine. Probably worth it. Probably. Alright. Let's see. Let's get those fucking shoes on. Where are they? Here we go. Nope. Okay. Huh. Where are they? Oh, God. Oh, dear God. Where are they? Oh, no! Where are the shoes that I bought? Did someone equip them? Oh, okay. I must have had Adair selected. Alright, we'll give him these, because they give him resolve, right? How much is one resolve for him? Just one deflection? Okay. One deflection, but two... Uh, will. Okay, interesting stuff. Eh, still one deflection? Alright, I'll take it. Okay, and then I will use these other ones. Let's see. Doink. Good. Alright, fantastic. Yeah, sure. Let's see, anything else up here? No. Eh? Quickly and quiet. Let's see, let's try and get uh, some of our money back here. <laughs> Alright, and what have you got? Whoa, he turned my money into fruit! I'll take it. Yeah. Alright, fantastic. And then, let's head on inside of here. Into the headquarters, alright? Bunch more shit over this way, too. Look at these little guys! Little frog dudes or something! Alright, they look like some kind of Pokemon. All right, let's see. What have we got up mm -hmm. in here? No problem. Ah, got some fancy looking shit, huh? Okay. Look at this. Company guards. VTC attendant. Valian Trading Company, I guess? Company guard, would you have to say anything interesting? The guard fixes you with an empty expression. Attendant? The officers... The offices are closed in the evenings. Please return in the morning. Ah... But th that means it's the perfect time to sneak a fucking around and shit, right? 
What time is it? Let's see here. Hour 16. Huh. That's not really that late. Are they only open at, uh... Hour 16? What? Do I not understand time? Wouldn't that be... Let's see. Yeah, that'd be 4 p.m., wouldn't it? Just subtract 12 from that? What? Look at this. I guess they close early. Oh, look at this. Black Pearl. Bunch of money. Yoink. Taking it. Hmm? Okay. Got it. What have we got up in here? Ooh, mechanics is too low. How about this? Hmm? Can I... My eyes are peeled. Can I test out my new shit? No? <laughs> I'd love to break into that. But it's looking like the answer is, uh, no. Let's see. Let's yeah. have a dare distract him. Oh, no. Okay. Governor Alviri doesn't appreciate any disruption of business. All right. Sure. Let's see if I can't disrupt some of this shit. Nope. Okay. Really nothing of value, though. All right. What's up, Luca? The clerk busies himself about the room, favoring you with a brief glance. He rubs under his eyes and exhales through his nose. Merla, if you are not on the schedule, you are here to waste my time. I spoke with Tawanu or Tawenu outside. You have a claim on his tribe's land? We can do an insight check to examine him. What is this place? Let's examine him. Luca's shirt is spotted with a number of faded purple stains that you recognize as droplets of wine. Someone has tried, unsuccessfully, to wash them out. Noting your interest, Luca tugs his jacket closed. The servers at the tavern are clumsy. Most clumsy, indeed. Huh. Is, it, is that implying that I could get dirt from him at the Wild Mare? Or dirt on him? He clears his throat and fans at his neck. Uh, what is this place, first? Stumbling from the street, I see. Great, what a dick. Lucas sneers and surveys you with a patronizing look. This is the heart of the Valian Trading Company. You would know that if you had a reason to be here. <laughs> Jesus. From her office, Governor Alvari carries out the will of the Sungretta Mea Compressa. And what is that? The Congress of the Company, a body of 11 high-stakes investors who collectively operate the Valian Trading Company. We clerks are the fingers of their long reach. He clutches his hand over his heart and bows sharply. I spoke with Tawainu outside. You have a claim on his tribe's land? Ak, a lawful claim, I might add. No matter what the native says to the contrary. He showed up with a forged contract, as if I wouldn't know the difference between our paperwork and theirs. He gestures dismissively out the door. Tawainu is lucky. I only seized the forgery. The Galid is too good for his kind. Huh. Okay. Chawainu didn't mention a forgery. I'm trying to spare you a headache by getting this sad native off the streets. There must be some agreeable way to sort out Chawainu's problem. Chawainu didn't mention a forgery. Sientere, it's no surprise the little cheat is an accomplished liar. Really? He's... yeah, he... Jesus, okay. I keep his cheap forgery locked in my chest. <laughs> it's good for the occasional laugh. Ooh, I want in there. All right. I'm trying to spare you a headache. Now, there must be some agreeable way to sort out Tawainu's problem. Your villager friend would do well not to stand between the company and our prize. Man, the Valian Trading Company just seems like a bunch of fucking dicks. The company's allowed to solve problems as we see fit. And right now, Tawainu is a problem. Besides, lying is second nature to the Ranga heir and his ignorant Gliente. Gliente. The, this word means people in Valian. Alright. I'll make sure Tawainu sees reason. What is the purpose behind such a contract? How much would it cost for you to lose the original contract? We're talking about the Duape homeland. This isn't right. Tawainu mentioned you were anxious about talking to him. Why? I don't have time to solve this politely. Pull out gun! Shoot him! <laughs> Let's see, streetwise... You know, I can always just sit on the office stoop and tell passers-by how the company conducts itself. Ooh, I love that. Shit, but first I want details, right? I want more info. Let's see, what is the purpose behind such a contract? Simple enough. 
We take on the burden of caring for the tribe in exchange for luminous Adra rights. Taweno is myopic if he thinks his tribe can thrive under Aranga in this climate. Hmm. Okay. Tawenu mentioned you were anxious about talking to him. Why? Yeah, let's get more info. Hmm. The crown has been known to grimace at our client tribe privileges. He steeples his fingers together and chooses his words with care. We do not allow local trouble to stymie us so that Rawatai can steal an advantage. Ooh. And an insight check, which we do not have enough for. Alright, but we do have enough for this! Let's fucking be a dick. Alright. You know, I can always just sit on the office stoop and tell passers-by how the company conducts itself. Ack, I see. Luca glances away, his gaze wandering anywhere but your direction. The company would appreciate it if you kept our affairs as discreet as possible. <clears throat> he clears his throat and passes you a pouch of coins. Now move along. I have larger matters to resolve than the fate of one insignificant island. Huh. All right. So did we just get money? No. All right, we still do need to... Yeah, we still need to handle this. Okay, but we did just... We got to... We, we made a little extra money along the way. All right. Luca insists that the... Where, where's the... Where was the addendum that we just got? It seems that Luca has a pension for heavy drinking. I wonder if I can use that to my advantage. Apparently, Tawainu presented Luca with a forged contract. Luca confiscated Tawainu's forged contract and locked it away in his chest. Okay. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So, let's see. Yeah. If this... If I can't oh, pop whoa. this fucking thing open, perhaps... Let's see here. Quietly. He's got a key on him. <laughs> let's see. Get the old key grab here. Yoink. And what have you got? Ooh! I love it! Luca's key, you motherfucker! You took this key off the Valian clerk, Luca. It seems like it fits a rather large container. Alright, perfect. We'll take the rest of this. Don't mind if I fucking do. To me. Every leaf parchment is coated in dense jargon. Alright. Okay. Let's go on up here. Let's kind of speed this along. Actually, we should be fine even if it's in the red, right? Pop this open. What have you got inside? Ooh, scroll of firebrand. Shitload of fucking dough as well. Forge contract. Let's see. This contract covers an agreement between the Valian Trading Company and the chief of the neighboring Duape tribe. It stipulates that while the Valians have been granted access to some mineral deposits, the Duape will return all, retain all rights to their land until the death of the representative. Attached to the paper is an amendment, however, altering the terms to extend those rights to the Duape indefinitely. The seal upon it doesn't seem quite as crisp as that of the original document. So he did totally forge it, right? But, fuck it, I don't give a shit, I'll still help him out. I mean, look at me. <laughs> look at me, am I exactly operating within the confines of the law? I, I spent some time uh, in between the last video wondering, um... Wondering exactly what my character alignment would be in this game. And in Pillars 1 to an extent, because I'm pretty much playing it the exact same way, right? I haven't had, like, some big revelation or whatever. And, uh... I say some time, but really it was it was about 10 seconds because I realized my character is absolutely chaotic good, right? That's totally the alignment I have here. All right. Let's see about handing this over real quick. All right. Tawainu, check it out. I got that shit. Got Look it. at this. Akira, you return. What say, friend? Tawainu touches his brow in greeting. Why didn't you tell me that you showed Luca a fake contract? I spoke to Luca. He doesn't make it easy, does he? I'm still trying to restore the Duwape land rights. On second thought, I'll return later. Huh. Alright. Right, yeah, I'm stupid as shit. We, he, there's no way giving him this could make him make them nullify the contract, right? Alright, why didn't you tell me that you showed Luca a fake contract? Fake? What say? Oh, no. Did he fake it? Oh, so is the real contract somewhere? His lips pressed together in a frown of concern. I showed Luca a new contract, yes? Fairer, more agreeable terms. Luca called me a criminal and summoned his guards. Ah, okay. I totally fucking understand what happened. All right. Tawainu lets his arms hang down by his sides. What did you mean by a new contract? 
Right. And they're totally, they're trying to take advantage of them being ignorant to how the Veiling Trading Company runs shit. Just like what Tawainu said they were doing with his father, or whoever the fuck was uh, the current leader of the tribe. All right, what did you mean by new contract? A man in the gullet offered to assist me. He carried papers, ink, and Oh, legs. oh, okay. <laughs> he helped to write a new contract in the Valian way and to fix the correct seals. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Luca, I say he did not like this. He took my contract and forced me into the streets. Tawainu gestures to the spot on which he stands. All right. That was very unjust of Luca. I'm pretty sure you were given a forgery. Huh. I wonder where, where this will lead. I mean, we have no reason to lie to him. I'm pretty sure you were given a forgery. I do not know this word. I would fix, but Luca will not give me the chance. Negotiating with outsiders has not gone my way. Tawainu scratches the back of his head. I spoke to Luca. He doesn't make it easy, does he? Huh. Why did they kick you out of their office? I'll look into it, but make no promises. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I spoke to Luca. He doesn't make it easy, does he? Akira. He holds fast to his responsibilities and bends for no man or woman. Stubbornness is admired among his people, I say. Inside check. Do you know anything about Luca that we could use to our advantage? I suppose their office has to close sometime. Luca enjoys his wine. Perhaps too much. On second thought, I'll return later. Let's see if he knows anything. His breath smells of drink, I say. A foreigner's weakness. Tawainu wrinkles his nose in distaste. A guard did whisper that Luca frequents the public house. Tawainu glances toward the tavern to the east. Akira, it may be that cooperation lies at the bottom of Luca's glass. Tawainu touches his lips, intrigued but uncertain. What can I do for you? Okay. Let's see, I'm still trying to restore uh, the Duwape land rights. Akira, my thanks. Tawainu's smile falters. No matter the end, I will not forget the kindness. All right, I'll return later. I will be going nowhere, my friend. The clerk and all of his harmful words could not move me. All right. Huh, well, when next we come back, we may continue poking around more in the Valian Trading Company uh, headquarters. Maybe we'll wait until it's, like, totally just up in the middle of the night or some shit, right? And then poke around. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, we're getting pretty close tonight. Yeah, and we'll we'll poke around then. Or from the sounds of it, they're already closed? I'm not sure. We'll see. And uh, if, if we get nothing in there worthwhile, we can totally just look around the Wild Mare again. Maybe one of our friends up there has some info, like on the second floor or whatever. Something like that. We'll see. Until next time. Peace. Peace.